Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'll be installing this Android point-of-sale tablet on the wall here in my kitchen, where it will act as a Home Assistant control panel. I purchased this tablet a few months ago, but between work, life, kids, and other DIY jobs, I haven't gotten around to installing it yet. And today, I plan to remedy that. I won't go into too much detail on this particular Android tablet, um, as I've done another video where I delve into the details. The main points about this tablet are that it's a 15 inch point sale unit, it has no integrated battery, and it's powered by PoE or power over ethernet. I chose a PoE device rather than a standard USB tablet, as I figured it would be easier to locate an ethernet cable in the wall rather than have to deal with a clunky USB power brick. The lack of integrated battery also means that I don't have to worry about it deforming over time as it's constantly powered on and I'm also not worried about it bursting into flames whilst I'm sitting down for dinner. I'm not 100% sure about the size yet and how, how that will kind of stand out from the wall but I didn't want it to be too small uh, where I'd end up squinting from across the room so I figured in this instance bigger was probably better. So in terms of fixing the tablet to the wall, this section of wall here is dot and dabbed plasterboard with a block behind it. Now as the tablet itself is quite chunky, it's well over an inch thick or an inch and a half thick, what I'm planning on doing is removing a section of the plaster and then setting the tablet into the recess that that creates. <clears throat> and that will hopefully help hide some of the, the thickness. The tablet comes with a mounting bracket, but I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to use that because it requires access from sort of immediately from the side and I'll, I'll show you that later on in the video and explain why I don't think I'll be able to do that. Once the tablet is mounted, I'll make a timber frame around the edge to make it look like a picture frame and that will hide the cut from the plaster and hide any of the cables so you won't be able to see in behind the tablet. So in terms of positioning the tablet we're going to use this switches here as the sort of halfway line. So we'll take the tablet and mount it so it's sort of split in two um, like that. I'm also planning on mounting it in this portrait position and there's two reasons for that. Uh, the first one is I want to be able to put some persistent information across the top such as the weather, battery charge status of the car, battery charge status of the home battery, hot water tank level etc and I'd like that sitting at the top all the time and then at the bottom we can have the common actions for turning on the heating, various lighting scenarios etc. I'm also thinking about using a calendar component inside Home Assistant so we can display the family's calendar for, for the week or for the month and that always looks nicer when it's in a portrait position. Mounting it at this level um, will also give my kids, my kids are quite young, so it will also give them access to the, to, the, to the tablet itself so they'll be able to switch some lights on and probably mess with it more than they should, but it's nice to, to have them using the tech and include them, in the, include them in this kind of stuff. So that's the plan. Uh, that's enough talking, I think, so let's mark this out uh, and start cutting the plaster out. All right, so I've gotten my laser out, and that's just giving me a steady line, so I'm not measuring off the floor. Uh, so I'm going to start by taking this distance here, and then we can mark out the, the center point. And that gives us our halfway mark up along the wall. The next thing to measure is the distance in. So we'll call that, call that 170. So we're going to then come in 170. That kind of brings us to about there. So if I then adjust the laser, That'll give me my line for that side. So I'll mark that out now. 
So the tablet itself is 405 by 255. So we're going to want to come down 200. Uh, well, actually that's, <laughs> isn't that quite interesting that that's lined up? Um, so that's essentially the bottom. Yeah, and then our top, our top will be 405, so our top will be about there. So I'll just check that actually against the tablet just to see. And that is a blind bit of look. That is a blind bit of look. Yeah. That that is actually... Yeah, wow, okay, great. That's, that's, that's blind look. Okay, brilliant. So I've got that side, and now I can measure my 255. Just double checking that, you can't see me, but I'm double checking that against the... So we'll come across, and our 255 is here. And again, I'll move the laser over. And then if we finish off by coming up uh, 405 mm -hmm. uh, from there. And then Take the line across this, it should be nice and level. And it is nah. all right. Uh, it's level enough. And we'll just mark the bottom. Just so I can then I can then turn the turn the laser off. So we'll go from that. Now, in terms of safety, I've used the stud finder with an electrical detector in there to determine where the power. Because I've got a socket down here, so there'll obviously be um, a ring main coming through there. So I've got to be very very careful now when I'm cutting into this because it showed it as being about here. So I'll have to just be very, very careful when I'm taking this piece of plaster off. And I'll just do one final, one final check. And this should sort of sit inside the bounds of that, which it does. Double check distance from there. Just matches. Okay, we're out by about two mil, but no one's gonna notice that. And I'm ready to start cutting now with the multi-tool. So I'm just using a DeWalt multi-tool. I've had this uh, for a couple of years now since I did the, the flooring, insulating the flooring. I just used it to cut the tongues. And I just have uh, one of these discs. So we'll pop that in and then in terms of safety got this oh. so I've got a mask I've got a dust sheet down here as well <laughs> So I'm through. That's the whole cutout. And we can see the brick behind. There's a metal backing box here, which the electrician would have would have put in. And there's my Ethernet cable. Um, and 
just inside here, I can see the, the metal protector for the uh, electrical cable. So I was glad um, that I kind of checked that with the, with the stud finder. So next thing to do now is get rid of the backing box. Just need to unscrew that. And then I need to get rid of this uh, dot and dab bonding that's been applied. Oh, I should probably check that the thing fits. Let's have a cursory look. And yeah, yeah, there are thereabouts. I'll, um, I'll take the cat, actually, I'll take the camera in a bit closer and then you can see, uh, you can see the insides. All right, so we're up a bit closer and you can actually see the depth of the, the gap behind there. And there's the metal guard over the ring main feeding the socket. And then the ethernet cable just disappears up there uh, and into the ceiling. So this is quite deep. Let me just grab my measuring tape. I had expected it to be about an inch, but actually you can see there it's four and a half centimeters, which is great. So that should give me a nice recess uh, to hide the tablet in. So what I'll do now is I'll have to take a hammer and chisel to this. I'll take this out and then unscrew that backing box. And then I'll have to figure out how to mount the tablet. With the bonding gone, I should now be able to actually push this back in. So I'll push the cable into the oh, push the cable into the into the void, and then this should hopefully oh blimey, it actually recesses all the way back. Huh? That is uh, well further than I thought. There's more space in there. I had to kind of guess it. I mean, I did measure it, but when I, when I measured it, it didn't come out as deep. Maybe I was measuring it against the bonding and I didn't realize, but there's absolutely oodles of play in there, which is great because I've got to think about how to mount the tablet now to that wall. So this is a good time, I think, to stop and I can kind of talk about the mounting bracket and how it's not, it's not going to work for me. So to give you an idea, this is the back of the tablet and you can see there's four screw holes here and um, you know, it looks like a little, little hook there. So it, it's supported, a, it's got a Versa mount and what it was supplied with was this bracket like so, but if you notice on the tip of the bracket there, there's this little thing standing proud. So what happens is that little knob goes into that recess and then you can slot the bracket across and then tighten it, oh God, it's covered in dust, and then tighten it, put a little screw, uh, and hopefully you can see that into that little hole there and fixes it. So. I think in my head I thought that would be fine, but now that I'm recessing it, I would A, have to give it extra wiggle room because the bracket has to be able to move. So that means the hole would need to be bigger so that I could slot it in and push it sideways. That's about a centimeter, I reckon. And I also then need to be able to get direct access to fix the screw, which isn't gonna happen if it's recessed into the wall. So I'll have to stop now and have a think 
about how I can best mount. Now, maybe I can mount this. Hmm. So maybe I can mount a, a piece of timber uh, to the wall here and then mount that bracket to it. And somehow I've got to, got to put my thinking cap on for this. All right, so that's taken a bit faffin, but I've made some cuts, stole some stuff, and I think I've got a mechanism now to fix the, the tablet in, and I'll take you through it. So essentially what I've done is I've fixed a small batten to this. I've just fixed it through, through the drywall, uh, and I've cut a notch into that. And then on the tablet itself, I fashioned uh, a small kind of mount for it. So this is just a piece of uh, six mil ply. So there's one big piece of ply and I've used the bracket to fix the tablet uh, onto that piece of ply. And then to the back of that piece of ply, I've attached uh, another strip of six mil ply. And you'll notice that it kind of sticks out at both ends. Quite a lot on this end, not so much on this end. So the mechanism I've got, if I just took that up out of the way, is that this here will sit down into this notch and it'll essentially rest on the little shelf that I've attached. And then because the, the tablet is actually curved, I've got a groove along the top here. So what I can do is essentially push it up, push that in, and then that will just sit down into that. So it's now resting on the little, uh, on that little platform, and the notch will hold it essentially from the bottom. It's still a bit, it is a bit wobbly, but I'm gonna solve that now. And then what I'm gonna do is basically drill a hole into the brick so that I can get a screw in through there and then I will essentially be able to fix that in through there and that will hold it all in place then. I've got to just make sure that it's all level. I think that's kind of, that's obviously a bit wobbly. So I've got to have a look at why, why the notch um, isn't holding that. But it's also a bit loose because of the, the platform itself and the tablet mount actually, as it turns out, isn't all that great. Uh, it doesn't fix to it particularly well, but I've got to, I've got to work with what I've got. Um, I just don't want it moving when you're tapping it. So I think once I've attached that at the back, it'll still be a bit wobbly. So I've got to, I've got a little bit more to do, but that's enough, I think, to get me kind of going. It's almost flush as well. Um, I might just raise this one up a little bit and then it will bring that, that bottom part uh, flush. And then I might fix some uh, battens onto the side of the, the platform as well, just to stop it wobbling around that, that center piece. But I'll, I'll drill this hole uh, and I'll see how it, it fixes in. And that will probably be enough for the time being. And then I can just patch these, patch these holes up and then the next thing will be to build the little frame around the edge. So let me get that drilled in and mounted and then we'll see where we, we'll see where we stand. So that was a bit of a mission, but it's now fixed. It's relatively sturdy. It's a little bit wobbly. Um, as I said, I put that down to the mount bracket. It's, it's just not great in terms of its security, but once the, the frame goes in, I'm hoping that that will help eliminate. And I can also probably just put some, put some uh, foam, bits of, bits of foam pipe, pipe foam or something, um, pipe insulation rather, uh, in around the edges and just tuck them in. But I'm, I'm happy with that. So it's powered up now, as you can see, and I've got it, I've got Visual Studio, uh, Home Assistant loaded. And that's just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like now from my, one of my heating dashboards. Uh, 
we'll do the frame. I'll do that tomorrow now that I know exactly what sort of gap I'm dealing with and I can get this cleaned up, fix the patches. It's, it's level, it's relatively vertical, it's a little bit out. I think I just need to uh, tighten that screw a bit or maybe get rid of some of the extra uh, bonding that's still behind the ply. But this means I can, if I ever need to, I've got a way that I can easily lift this out now so it's not fixed in in such a way that I can't get rid of it. So I'm really, I'm really pleased with that now. Obviously got to switch the dark theme on um, to match everything else. I also need to think about these lights and just to see if there's a way I can maintain them because I'd like to be able to use them. I'm not quite sure if I can get at those lights uh, through the Android OS under this that's connected, but it might be possible. So that's a kind of a project I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at once I've finally got this set up. But we'll move on now and I'm going to stop now for today um, and tomorrow I can have a look at building a little frame and we can get this uh, finished off and remove the screen protector. The next day. All right, so welcome back to day two of installing this Android tablet. Overnight, I had some time to think about my design and how I'd mounted the tablet in the wall. And this morning when I came down to start thinking about the frame, I realized that I actually had a lot more room to play with. And what I wanted to do was to actually recess the tablet slightly so that it appeared more like a picture. So rather than the frame being flush with the front of the tablet, I thought it'd be nice if it created like a beveled edge. So when I, uh, when I kind of took my piece of timber that I'm going to use to make the frame, I realized that the tablet was sitting too proud and I kind of, kind of get one chance to sort of do this. So I took the, the large piece of plywood away and I mounted the bracket directly onto that single strip. So I'm going to take this off now and I'll show you the changes that I've made. It also fits a lot more snugly as well and I've ended up actually putting some packers in place just to help level the tablet. But it works in exactly the same way. So it lifts out and up. So I'll come a bit closer to the camera. And hopefully you can see this. Yeah, so it's got the same strip fixed to the back and I've just put a small bit of timber down here at the bottom. And then I've actually added some uh, packers uh, between the plywood and the, the frame. Ignore this big screw I'm using it just because that was easier to fix in. And that helps the tablet then sit proud. I'm also going to fix this uh, packer to the top here just to account for the unevenness in the brickwork. Uh, but I haven't stuck that on yet. So that's essentially the changes I've made. Not, not too far away from my, my original design, but it works in the same way. And then it just sits down uh, into place. And then, as I said, the, the, that timber batten at the back sits on top of the packers. I've got to cut this packer back. Uh, it sits on top of those packers and that helps keep it um, into position. So it means then, and I'll, I'll bring the camera, I'll bring the camera closer. So if I kind of take a look at the side, you'll hopefully be able to see that's the edge of the wall there. And you can see now that the tablet is sitting slightly proud and its frame, which is this metal frame, it's kind of a decorative frame, I think, that's now sat flush with the plaster. So when I go to put the timber in, it'll sit just slightly, probably five or six mil proud uh, of the tablet. And hopefully that means then I can have a nice snug fit and it will look more like kind of a picture frame. I mean, the bezel itself is going to actually be massive once you take into account the bezel on the screen, but there's not really much 
uh, that I can do. You'll also notice I, I just put some silver foil around that to stop any dust coming off just to contain the plaster. And then the hole up here, that's where you get access to the screw to tighten that back. And that's much, much tighter now. So that's another reason why I need that kind of bigger, bigger bevel. So I'm going to make the bevel frame now. It's just going to be a couple of mitered cuts, nothing too fancy. And then I'll, I'll come back and, as they say, offer that up and see what it looks like. One hour later. So I've knocked up a simple frame just out of some, I think it's like 20 by 10 mil ply that was left over from uh, some work the carpenter had done. And it's just got four mitred corners <coughs> glued and nailed. It, it's not the nicest piece of joinery I've ever done. It's not the worst piece of joinery uh, I've ever done either. It'll do once it's um, filled and sanded and painted. And then it will just sit around the tablet like this. Now, of course, the wall isn't the wall isn't square, isn't plumb, so I'm not sure how we're going to fix this on. Um, I suspect probably just some command strips or something similar. And then at least it means that the frame can be removed and then the tablet can be taken out if needs be. So I've also just put a little bit of filler into the holes there as well. So I'll let that, that dry and then uh, put a bit more on and clean that up. And in the meantime, I'll let this uh, glue dry for a little bit and then I'll get the orbital sander to this and hopefully get a lick of paint on it and then we'll see where we stand. So whilst I'm waiting for the frame to dry and for me to kind of finish it, I thought it would be useful to just run through how I'm displaying Home Assistant and what, what app I'm using and stuff. So for this, I've opted for something called the Fully Kiosk Browser. So that is an app, which I'll exit. And essentially this will launch uh, a URL of your choice and it will launch it in full screen mode. So it'll hide, you can notice there's some buttons and volume and thing down here. So when you launch that, it takes over the entire screen and you can't launch another app from the launcher. Well, actually, yeah, actually you can, but you can lock it so that nothing else can be, can be run when this is open. Um, it gives you mountains and mountains of options, uh, all sorts of settings. So you can control what it views, different settings for pull to refresh and NFC and what the toolbars look like and set up the screensaver so it can show you images. Uh, there's different power settings so you can have it go to sleep. Um, and then there's other features inside that are part of this plus mode. So you can buy a license for the app. And once you've got the license, it gives you some extra features. And one of the extra features you get is something called remote administration. And what a remote administration lets you do is you can control the kiosk from Home Assistant. So I've added it as an integration, which I will find in here somewhere for the kiosk. If I open this, this is very tiring on my arm, just so you know. Um, you can see there's different options. So you can kind of bring it to the foreground, send it to the background. You can adjust screen brightness. You can see that adjusts uh, automatically. Uh, you've also got different features where you can lock it, like you can put it into a maintenance mode. It also has motion detection and things, so it can use the camera to know if there's some motion in the room and then it can wake the display up. I haven't really played with uh, too much of these settings yet. Uh, but it was about t it was about ten pound to buy the fully fledged app, and I think it's probably worth it. The only other thing, or another thing to note, is that when you're in dark mode, which I'm not, the 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 glare from 
the windows and everything, the kind of reflection of the glass is really bad. So I've had to switch this into uh, the kind of light mode just so you can see it on the camera. But this is my kind of heating dashboard. Um, and then I've started, you know, I've got some other ones. And then I've started making one specifically for the tablet. So the first one, I think, controls all the Christmas tree lights that you can see. They're off the screen. Um, that's what I'm going to use. I've got a couple of ideas for um, extra automation, which will use things like my FP2 kind of presence sensor um, and other bits and bobs to sort of make the tablet wake up when needs be but I just want to kind of continue to focus on just getting the, the, the boundary done but that's kind of a, a brief let's see if I can bring myself back into shot so that's a kind of a brief overview of sorry that's the so that's a, a brief overview of the Fully Browser Kiosk. Uh, there is another version of that app, uh, which is like Fully Kiosk app. And I was wondering whether I could run the Home Assistant app directly through that. But I'm, for now, I'm just going to stick with the, the browser and I'll see how I get on with that. So I'll continue once I've got that border painted and into position and then I can wrap up. Much, much, much later. So after a lot of sanding and three coats of black paint, I finally finished the frame. To attach it to the wall, I'm using the Velcro style command strips. So that will give me a really secure fixing to the wall, but it will also make it easy to take the frame off should I need to get to the tablet behind for any reason. So I'll just stick this up now. Et voila. That's it. So there's still an awful lot to do in terms of setting up the, the dashboard that I want and figuring out what information I need to display up there. I also need to get a handle on the, the fully kiosk browser app and see what sort of automations and control I can get from that through Home Assistant so that I can wire up some automations to do things like turning the screen on and off when there's nobody home, for example. So I've got to still figure a lot of that out and that will take probably a bit of time just kind of figuring out what's working, what's not working, what's useful, what's not useful. I've also heard back from the vendor and they've provided me the API information on how to control the, the strip lights uh, on the tablet so I'll be able to hopefully use those to display some status maybe around energy usage or something similar. Once I've had this installed for about a month or so, I'll do a follow-up video where I'll run through in some detail the final setup uh, of the dashboard and any of the automations that I end up using. If you've done something similar and you've got a control panel in your house, I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to understand what sort of information you're displaying on your dashboard. Uh, and any kind of automations that you've ended up using just to give me some ideas of what I can do with mine. If you have any questions about the, the tablet or this install, please reach out to me using the comments and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. If you've enjoyed this video, please do click the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please do consider subscribing as that will help me continue making videos like this. And that's it for this video. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.